Hi, everybody. Welcome to Wikibon World Headquarters. I'm Jeff Kelly, Lead Big Data Analyst here with Wikibon. Uh, as you may have noticed, the flash market has really been heating up lately. We've seen uh, some acquisitions in the space, most notably Fusion IO being acquired by SanDisk. Um, research firm Gartner recently came out with some market sizing uh, around the all flash array market and showed some incredible growth over the last uh, year or so. Uh, and of course, we've got the Flash Memory Summit coming up in just a few weeks. So I thought this would be a good time to check in with Stu Miniman, who's our lead software-led infrastructure analyst here at Wikibon, uh, has been conducting uh, some research around the Flash market uh, to get an update. Stu, welcome. And why don't you start by saying, you know, what's going on with this Flash market with all this activity? Why now? What's what's kind of driving some of this uh, activity we're seeing? Yeah, so, so Jeff, thanks so much. Uh, we've been watching the Flash uh, market for quite a long time. We've actually looked at this more as a kind of 10-year adoption that Flash is going to uh, go on, and we're almost six years into this now, and we expect to see even more innovation and, and more gro you know, much more growth over the next four years that, than we've seen over the last six. Uh, so as you mentioned, there's some consolidation in the marketplace going on uh, on the on the server uh, side and basically the NAND players where we're seeing consolidation similar to what we saw on the disk side many years ago. Uh, th those familiar with the storage market probably remember when we had you know over 15 different disk drive manufacturers and there's three now. Uh, and we're starting to see the same thing on the flash side. So the component vendors uh, are, are going to consolidate down and you have to see who's going to differentiate and who's going to be able to own that market. Uh, of course, notably uh, Fusion IO bought by SanDisk. Uh, Verdant was bought by HDST. Uh, you've got uh, you know just a, a handful of players that are trying to be the, the next generation, not only of the component, but uh, really trying to make a, a new systems business out there. So, you know, HDST, Viridint, uh, uh, um, you know, LS, uh, not LSI, LSI's uh, components have been acquired, Seagate, uh, there, there's a number of these guys uh, that are trying to do in many ways uh, like what EMC did back in the 90s to create new storage players in the marketplace. Uh, and there's, there's lots of different segments in the market. Uh, there's the server-based activity, there's the uh, all-flash array, uh, the hybrid storage, and uh, yeah, lots of flash going into the traditional arrays also. Let's dig into that a little bit more for, for the non-Flash expert out there. So you've got your all-Flash arrays, you've got hybrid approaches. Uh, can you help us understand what are the what are the key differences there between those two different approaches to Flash? Sure. So uh, Flash is, is is really a game changer because you look, it gives you really high performance at uh, a, a relatively low uh, kind of power, uh, but it does cost more. So the question is. Uh, if I could just build something and it was it was really cheap and a lot of flash, would that be what I'd want? Um, and what some of the, the guys that just drive nothing but flash will say, of course, that flash takes over the entire market and that disk shouldn't have any place because if I can do uh, what we call storage efficiencies, things like uh, compression and deduplication and thin provisioning, I can actually fit a lot more onto a flash drive uh, and, a, and a flash array that's built with that technology uh, than what I was doing without those storage efficiency technologies. Now, of course, uh, some of those technologies I can use inside disk too, so um, it's, you know, how much data can I fit into mm -hmm. disk versus flash. Um, flash, as I said, you know, much lower power, uh, and it, it's starting to get greater capacities, but at least today and for the next few years, we see that the disk is still a capacity play, um, but performance is really where flash fits. Um, and for a real quick cut at the, at the data, if you look, the hybrid arrays are doing, you know, wonderfully in, in kind of the small to mid market because um, you know, th there's only certain applications that I really need the high performance and most data, um, you know, even after the first few days, definitely after the first month, uh, kind of 60 to 90 days, I'm not going to access it as much, so I want the cheapest place to put it. And even with all those storage efficiency uh, pieces, uh, I, I typically do want some, some disk. Um, so, so that's kind of the hybrid markets. Uh, we were at the Nimble Storage's Adaptive Flash launch uh, back about a month or so ago. Um, they're doing quite well after their IPO. Uh, you've got companies like Tgile and the big guys, everybody from uh, you know, HP with their uh, three par and IBM and EMC. Uh, and, and, and NetApp are all doing well in, in Flash. Uh, on the all Flash array market, this is where uh, you know there's kind of a lot of attention being looked at from Wall Street because there's huge growth. As you mentioned, Gartner uh, came out with recent numbers, said we went in 2012 from 236 million to 667 million in, in 2013, so almost a tripling uh, of the marketplace. And it's really interesting to watch you know, how fast the players are changing um, because in 2013, IBM was the big winner. They took the lead and they took it away from Violin, who was an early leader in that space. 
uh, Pure Storage is doing quite well in that market, but uh, then you've got companies like EMC coming on strong with strong growth rate and their Extreme IO uh, just came out with a, a big new update. Well, so put some of those numbers we we saw from Gardner into context. So that's obviously a pretty significant growth rate up to, I think you mentioned about $667 million market in by the as of the end of 2013. Right. Uh, are, based on your research, are you finding the majority of the uh, whether it's all flash array or the hybrid approach uh, installations, are they replacing more traditional storage? Are they eating away at that market, which is you know multi-billion dollar market, or are these net new uh, installations that are kind of building on top of more yeah. of the traditional storage? Yeah, great, great question, Jeff. What we find is that typically, um, like many new technologies, it's a project that helps get the technology in the you know its foot its foot in the door. So. Uh, Virtual desktop or VDI was actually uh, a very early use case, um, but at Wikibon we actually think there's a limit as to how far that VDI market can grow uh, with, with Flash, even though it does provide um, some good price points uh, for VDI. Uh, we really think that the database market, where there's a huge opportunity to grow and disrupt uh, the traditional uh, uh, market array and the economics in the data center overall. Um, look later this summer to see some updates from, from Wikibon Research led by uh, David Floyer, who will be uh, presenting at the Flash Memory Summit that you mentioned at the beginning of August um, because Flash can eventually uh, just allow me to reconfigure my environment uh, so that my overall cost can go down and anybody that knows databases knows that it's it's the Oracle or SQL licenses that take the you know more than the majority of the budget there so anything that can be done uh, to adjust that even a little bit can have huge ramifications on the overall budget uh, the other thing is it's really about simplicity of the of the, uh, the application because if I start out of a project but eventually I, I learned that I can just do things so much faster uh, with Flash that uh, I can do things like development faster uh, and help roll out, uh, you, you know, lots of applications in that environment. I can make my business more agile. And if it can be simpler, um, because operational costs is where most of the budget goes uh, for, for data center as a whole, um, you know, th 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 there's room for growth uh, in that environment. So I I'd say is that the all flash market, the all flash array market, um, it's not necessarily going to be the platform today that you can run your entire business on. A um, couple of examples on that. SolidFire uh, was, was a startup in the space, started in the service provider market, and they would help service providers create a tier uh, based on that all flash array. Um, and the service providers would have other technologies to provide uh, the you know disk or capacity tier. Uh, if we look at EMC, who's the overall market leader in storage, they have the Extreme IO product for the all flash array, and usually you will have another storage uh, product for uh, the capacity, and whether that be for backup and archiving, like with the data domain, or uh, the, the Isilon product, which has been doing quite well uh, for scale out NAS, uh, it's going to be a, a combination. So um, we do are, are tremendously bullish on the flash market, but um, we, we see disk for capacity uh, and even tape for capacity uh, living on for, for many years to come. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so disk is not dead, uh, but flash is going to play an increasingly important role. It sounds like. Yeah, sure. and, and, and the big question really is, if you talk about disruption, you know, what happens to the traditional storage arrays um, because they're getting eaten away by mm -hmm. flash? They're getting eaten away by new architectures like the server sand market. That's the server base that can leverage both uh, disk and flash. Uh, so, uh, you know, over the next kind of two to three years, there, there's big disruption onto the architect architectures. So, um, by the next time every user is going through their upgrade cycle they're probably going to want to you know take a look at uh, you know what they're doing and they might not want to just add another box of what they've done in the past yeah I just want to go back to something you mentioned earlier about the consolidation happening I mean what's driving that consolidation is it simply uh, the level of maturity in the market um, and then kind of maybe building on that what are we seeing the more traditional storage companies do you mentioned a little bit about what EMC is doing you mentioned IBM's kind of leading the pack in terms of the all flash array market um, how are the more traditional storage companies really adapting in this new world as well okay so first when we're talking about consolidation we're talking about the flash suppliers and absolutely uh, it's kind of maturity of the market and you know uh, lots of startups come in there or the existing players uh, you know some of the new startups get just acquired in where they can fit into an existing big portfolio um, and uh, you know others are trying to c come out of this if we look at uh, you know the three recent IPOs that happened uh, fusion IO uh, you know 
did okay as, a, as an IPO, but couldn't sustain it, got bought by SanDisk. Uh, Violin, uh, you know, ha has had some financial challenges uh, to maintain their growth, uh, and they're trying to kind of just sort out how they move forward. Uh, they put some new management in, in, in place, uh, and uh, they're, they're looking to sustain their growth, uh, maybe get some new partnerships in place. Um, and Nimble was the other one who has built, you know, they're, they're over $100 million, but, you know, if you look at a uh, market that's, you know, billions and billions of dollars, they're still a relatively small player in the market. Um, so, you know, we haven't seen, you know, that, that new billion-dollar company uh, that has, can kind of sit a seat at the table with uh, the big traditional, kind of the big six that we look at in storage, uh, which is, you know, IBM, HP, NetApp, uh, EMC, Dell, and Hitachi. So, you know, there, there's the thing about the storage market is it is very fragmented. Uh, you know, nobody really owns the market. Uh, the, you know, there are leaders in every segment uh, and, uh, you know, strong players across the board, but storage has been a real tough one for anybody to kind of dominate. And uh, the question is, is if we look at, at the end of this flash wave, how much will the big six look different and how will there be some new uh, players sitting at the table? Well, it'll be interesting to see. So um, we've only got time for one more question, so I want to ask you a little bit about what you've got planned. Um, events, research related to Flash, what can we look for? Yeah, so uh, first thing as I mentioned, uh, for the Flash Memory Summit, uh, expect to see our analysis on how uh, Flash can re-architect uh, the, the data center coming out. So uh, by early August, we'll have that research. Uh, and fr from a show standpoint, uh, the Cube's actually, uh, at least today, not planned to be at the Flash Memory Summit. Uh, the big shows that will uh, involve Flash are, of course, VMworld uh, at the end of August in San Francisco uh, and Oracle Open World also at Moscone uh, about a month or so after that. So, uh, you know, lots of database virtualization uh, and heck, cloud. You know, you know, Jeff and you and I will both be at uh, AWS reInvent, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, later in the fall. And uh, we're starting to see Flash really end up in the cloud a lot. Uh, so, you mm -hmm. know, that that whole intersection that we say of software-led infrastructure, cloud, and big data uh, flashes a key component uh, that, that fits in that, that entire equation. Great. Well, uh, you know, if the flash market is as active as it has been in the last year, in the coming year, it's going to be plenty of plenty of fodder for good research and uh, coverage on the cube. Uh, so that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching, uh, and you can always check out uh, our research at Wikibon at wikibon.org, uh, and of course watch the cube live at siliconangle.tv and on demand uh, youtube.com/siliconangle. Uh, we'll see you here next time. Thank you.